Do you ever find yourself out in the lineup watching everyone around you catch waves, but you can't seem to do it? And when you finally do catch a wave, it either closes out or fizzles out right in front of you? Well, it's probably because you're making the same three common mistakes I see every up and coming surfer make. The good news is that it's easily fixable. Unlike my truck, which decided it ain't shifting into first gear anymore. Sometimes that works. <laughs> nope. By the end of this video, you're gonna know how to read waves properly and also put yourself in the right position. Now this first mistake is a very boring one to discuss. I promise the next two are way more fun, but without covering spot choice, the next two solutions just aren't gonna work. When I was younger, I was so anxious to get out of the water that I would just paddle out at the first spot I pulled up to. This is what many new surfers do and it's a mistake because it relies totally on luck. The waves you pick can make or break your surf session, so you have to check at least a few places and play what I call the imagination game at each location. To play this game, we have to look for two things. One, we want a wave that has a decently long face. The peak of this wave has already broken, but there's still a nice and long unbroken face left. To contrast, this wave barely has any face left, therefore it just dies out. Two, we want the breaking part of the wave to break slowly along that face. When you see a wave like that start to roll in, you have to imagine a surfer is on that wave very close to the breaking section. Ask yourself, can the surfer realistically get a good ride out of this wave? Was the wave too fast? Was it too slow? After the wave fizzles out, does it rebuild again and you could potentially get a second ride out of it? Ever since I started putting more effort into picking the right spot, my wave count has gone way up, and those days where nothing is working, they're pretty rare. Mistake number two is not catching the wave in the right place. If you try catching the wave too far out on the shoulder, you're probably not gonna catch the wave at all. If you're catching the wave too deep, it's most likely gonna close out in front of you. To put yourself in the perfect spot, you have to understand how waves work and also what to look for. When you're looking at a wave, one of the most important aspects is the peak. This is the point on the face of the wave that's the tallest and is gonna break first. In a perfect world, we would try to take off at the peak and decide whether we're gonna go right or left depending on what the shoulder looks like. However, waves are rarely perfect. In this scenario, I took off at the peak when in reality the spot to take off was between me and Gilad. I gained this knowledge by wiping out, and now I'll be looking to take off 15 yards or so to the right of the peak the rest of the session. Ideally, you should be taking off as close to the peak as you can while avoiding the closeout sections. The closer you are to the peak or the steeper part of the wave, the easier the wave is to catch. Now, as discussed in the first tip, you should be studying the waves before you paddle out just to get an idea of how they're breaking. However, the ocean is constantly changing, so you have to learn how to adapt on the fly. This is why you always see the best surfers constantly paddling for position and rarely sitting still for extended periods. While we're sitting waiting for waves, especially at beach breaks, you have to constantly be scanning the ocean looking for bumps. Those bumps can give us an indication that a wave might be coming. Have you ever noticed those times where every surfer is just sitting and waiting for a wave and then all of a sudden everyone drops to their boards and starts paddling in unison? That's because they all saw a bump. If I see a bump that's about this wide and I'm looking to catch the wave about 15 yards to the right of the peak, you'll see me start to paddle towards that spot well before the wave ever gets to me. Sometimes I'll see a bump, I'll paddle towards it and it'll turn out to be absolutely nothing, but that is surfing. Constantly scanning, paddling, getting it right sometimes, failing miserably sometimes. The more time you spend in the water focusing on these things, the better your positioning is gonna get. And finally, mistake number three, and the most common among new surfers, is not paying attention to anchor points. The ocean is constantly moving. Whether it's a current, a riptide, set waves rolling in, if we're sitting still in the ocean, we're gonna go wherever it takes us. We need to fight against this by using visual anchor points. If I know the best place to sit is right here, I'll pick a landmark on the beach to keep myself from drifting left or right. This might be a house or a sign or even a board you leave on the beach. My drifting in or out landmark will typically be a jetty or a pier. Now, as the ocean changes, these landmarks will also change, but you always have to be aware of where you are on both of these axes. After learning all these tips, your positioning will still never be absolutely perfect, and that's where the takeoff comes into play. Maybe you're a little far out on the shoulder or you're a little too deep. 
utilizing the right takeoff method can fix a slightly poor position, which is why you gotta watch this video next where I show you my top three favorite takeoff methods.